Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the buffered reader class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com and select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the buffered reader class. Now the buffer reader class is used to read text from a character stream. This tutorial builds on concepts from both my input stream reader tutorial and my file reader tutorial. I highly recommend watching them first. This tutorial will demonstrate reading text from an input stream from the keyboard and will also demonstrate reading an input stream from a text file. The buffered reader class has the same read method that both the input stream reader and file reader use to read a single byte at a time. Now the buffer reader class introduces a method named readLine, which will read an entire line of text, which is a huge improvement. Now the buffer reader class implements auto closable, so we can use try with resources type exception handling. All right, let's go ahead and move the browser off screen here. And I'm, I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right-clicking, selecting new shortcut, type in CMD, next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open this up here. And first thing we do is type in uh, Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, however, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you, make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash CD is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here with the MD command called Java. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory here called uh, BR, short for buffered reader. Change directories to the buffered reader folder. And now I'm going to notepad example.txt. Okay. Let's bring back over the web browser here. And we'll come down here and just highlight these five lines of text. Right click, copy, or control C to copy. Let's come over here, paste it, save it, and we are done with that. All right, let's uh, go ahead and notepad br.txt, short for buffered reader, not text. We want Java, br.java. Java has to end in the Java extension for the source code file. All right, let's go ahead and bring the browser back over here. And let's highlight the source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's get that off screen and Control V to paste or right click and select paste. Okay, so the first thing we've got going on here, I'm importing uh, the Java IO package and everything in it. Class BR, here's the main method entry point. You know what, I don't need throws IO exception in there because I'm doing the other. Let's just go ahead and take that out. Let's go back up here and save it. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm doing on this, uh, this first statement up here is I'm just displaying to the console using the print method, not the print line. So the cursor will be basically over here. Enter some text and press enter. So using our try with resources style here, right, because buffered reader implements auto closable, we don't have to like put in like, you know, a, uh, remember to put in like br.close or something like that there, right? It auto closable will automatically, the auto closable interface, when, as long as we, we put the, you know, um, the statement that we're doing right here inside of the parentheses prior to the try code block there, it'll go ahead and call the close once that's done anyway, okay? So buffered reader type br is our reference variable, setting that equal to a new buffered reader and I'm wrapping an input stream reader here, right? And the input stream reader is taking the system.in as, um, as its constructor there for its input stream, okay? Now the system.in, of course, is the standard input, uh, the standard input basically, which is the keyboard by default. So it's going to take all of the input stream from the keyboard. Input stream reader is wrapping that input stream, which turns it from a byte stream into a uh, character stream, and then buffered reader is reading that um, character stream, and then we can just basically invoke some methods on that. 
Okay, so that's how that's all working there. It might be a little confusing looking at all this, but if you follow my tutorials, hopefully that all makes sense there. So the next thing we're going to do is display to the console, you typed, and then plus VR, which is our reference variable, and we're gonna invoke the read line method. Now the read line method returns a simple string, okay? Um, and of course it has uh, no parameters there, right? So we'll display whatever we just typed. We'll just basically echo it right back out to the console. And then I'll display a new line here with this, okay? Now I've got the rest of this commented out here. So let's just go ahead and run this here. And save. let's clear our screen. Java C to compile it. And let's run it there, okay? So let's just type in, um, we can capture an entire line now. All right, and when we press enter, right? So you type, we can capture an entire line now. Okay, so that's basically the uh, the read line method there. Of course, the um, that returns it back as a string, so that's all fairly fairly simple, but it sure saves a little bit of effort there as far as like the whole looping thing with the read um, the read method there. All right, let's um, go ahead and, well, we'll keep this up here, but let's uncomment the multi-line comment here. Let's see. So what you'll notice is the BR, the reference variable BR, is actually local to the try catch. You could think of it as being inside of the code block right here, because it's in the scope of the, of the try, basically, okay? So we can do the exact same um, reference variable BR here. We're not gonna get like, if it was outside of this try, like right up here on this line, and this one up here was, let's say for example, right after that on um, like this line right here, then we'd have some issues if we were declaring a buffer reader BR outside of the scope there. We would basically say, you know, it's already been declared. But the, since we can, since it's in the scope of this code block specifically right here, we can go ahead and use the same exact um, declaration there. Okay, so now we're wrapping new file reader, and uh, of course the file reader, if you watch that tutorial, I'm doing the exact same thing, example.txt, text file we just created there, with those five lines of it there, and then I'm displaying to the console the contents of example.txt. And so we're just looping through, uh, buffer reader has the same ready method that the uh, input stream reader does as well, right? And so ready just basically returns back true as long as there is um, you know basically something still in the input stream to be read okay and then we'll just display um, line by line to the console there okay and of course catch any io exception that occurs let's go ahead and save this let's clear our screen and compile this Enter. So here we go. The contents of example.txt. You can see just we just basically looped through there while it was uh, while ready was returning true and displayed the entire lines there. Okay. So that's basically the uh, the new thing that buffered reader introduces there is the read line method there. So that uh, that's about all there is to that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Get rid of that and um, just leave you with some. Quick final thought there. So the buffer reader class really comes in very handy for reading a single line of input stream from the keyboard or the entire contents of a text file. So anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.